It's been voted one of the best British films of all time, and this year Kez celebrates its 40th anniversary. Filmed in and around Barnsley, it's become a cult classic, making stars out of its unknown cast. Lucy Hester takes up the story. <laughs> and his crew came to Barnsley to film Kez, little did they know they were making a movie that would be hailed as one of the all-time classics of British cinema. Apart from one or two established faces, Kez featured a cast of unknowns, many of whom had never acted before, all drawn from Barnsley and South Yorkshire. The plot line was simple enough. A boy with no future finds meaning in his life when he trains a kestrel. But there was a much more powerful message at play here. A bird that flew free while the boy remained in chains. Forty years on and that boy is now a middle-aged man. David Bradley is the actor who will forever be Billy Casper. This is one of the most, or it was one of the most important locations in the film, wasn't it? Yes, it was. This is where Billy finds the kestrel, and that's the moment that completely changes his life. His family life is dysfunctional. He hates school life. He doesn't have really any close friends. He's in trouble with the police. And suddenly, there's, there's a light that kind of clicks on when he sees this beautiful bird. This ruin on the outskirts of Barnsley is now in a dangerous state, and 40 years ago it was also a perilous place for a young actor. You had to scale this wall, didn't you? Yes, I did. We, we had some straw right down at the basement there. Or to um, break your fall. If, in case I fell. <laughs> we had some mountaineering spikes uh, strategically positioned in the wall, and, and I found myself climbing up. You didn't have any ropes? No ropes, just no. Just the straw to break the floor? Uh, just, the, just the straw. <laughs> Ken Loach is now one of Britain's leading film directors, but it's Kez which remains arguably one of his greatest works. So what is it that makes the film so popular? I think they enjoyed the, the memories of their own school days refracted through Billy Casper's troubles. Work, work. I think they like Billy's hope yeah, with the birds, and I think that's, that's always touching. Did you know when you auditioned David Bradley that you'd found something special? He just was who he was, and, and in revealing himself, he, he shed a light onto, the, onto Billy Casper. Though Billy Casper is different to how David was, but but David was very vulnerable, very open, and just made it true. <laughs> Kez was adapted from Barry Hines' book, A Kestrel for a Knave. Hines, a former teacher, based the story on the perils of children who were written off for failing the 11 plus. Remarkably, Kez was shot in the same school in which Barry Hines taught and a young David Bradley was still a pupil. And it's here that some of the movie's most memorable scenes were filmed. We did the, the, the caning sequence where we were assured we wouldn't be caned. And uh, when it came to the point where we held out our hands, um, the first time we did it, Ken shouted, cut. You, you can't imitate that expression, you know, certainly. No, it could imitate the, the point at which the cane strikes the hand. So, um, so we just caned them, really. And because we weren't aware of being hit, suddenly we were in extreme pain. And we decided that we wouldn't, we wouldn't continue. We went on strike. You got extra ten, Bob. So he was... He was, well, within a few minutes, he was very happy to uh, be on his way to the piggy bank with an extra ten bob. <laughs> he said that you're wasting your money, that it's your money that you're burning, and it's your hands that get caned when you come in here. Author Simon Golding is one of Kez's biggest fans, so much so that he's written a book based on the memories of former cast and crew, 
and for him, one moment stands out as pure cinematic gold. Obviously, you've got to alight on Brian Glover. That fabulous football scene, um, everybody talks about it. It's probably the most talked about of all the different scenes. And he was just a wonderful character. Um, I think he was a wonderful character person anyway. Um, and I think just Ken just brought that out. Apart from Colin Welland, um, who obviously been in Z cars, the rest of them were teachers, a um, few of them were cabaret artists, and the rest were obviously school, just school children, that's all they were. Unknown. But the film baffled some in the movie industry. The broad Yorkshire accents were seen as a barrier to it being a major money spinner. At the time, it, it had a hard battle to survive. Um, the, uh, when the Americans first saw it, it was paid for by Americans, bizarrely enough, and when they first sat in a viewing theatre in London, they, the guy said he, he understood Hungarian better. I've been using crayons for about a week, and it had been going 30, 40 yards. They, they didn't get it, and what happened is that the film was received very badly. There was a lot of talk about um, dubbing, subtitling, um, and giving it a different dynamic, which would have maybe sold the film more widely in America or further afield, but the truth and the purity of the, of the project would have been lost entirely. You'd have thought that after 40 years, all of us about cares that would have died down, but the film has a whole new generation of fans. And some have gone to remarkable lengths to show their admiration. Tell me, was this tattoo sore? Yeah, <laughs> it was actually, yeah. I just wanted something different and something that I won't ever get bored of. I love film, it's from around area, and uh, my granddad was a miner. Uh, my dad used to go nesting when he was a young man. He'll always come home and say, everybody's been asking me about my tattoo again, Dad, so he is happy with it. And mm. Like I said, I am happy with it. I mean, there should have been a bit of brickwork around here, but you have to stop. Go when it got near chin bar. The extraordinary story of a boy and his hawk has endured for four decades, despite its tragic ending. Just give me hawk instead, that's why. He never has. He is, I know he is, because he could catch me. Sean, you have not killed his kids off. So I have. What are you going to do about it? You're going to kill yourself, that's what you want. You come out of the movie wondering quite what it is you've just witnessed, and really, you know, shouting for that boy cheering for him because you want him to break out of that environment and you want him to have to have hope and a future. 40 years on, Kez has become a much-loved classic, voted the seventh best British film of all time. It's an eternal story. It's as relevant today in the 21st century as it was 40 years ago. I mean, at the end of the film, we, we don't know exactly what happens to, to Billy, but I think he'd be all right. I, I, I think he'd be okay.